Well, here we are back again. Uh, been a while. A couple of days. Come on, Chubbs. Can we get up here? Okay, come on. Ugh. He just came in from out in the snow again. He loves to play in the snow. It's been snowing here again. It won't stop. Our snow just doesn't disappear. And, uh, and it's cold, so it's staying. It's like 30 degrees out there. But I went to my orientation class for my chemotherapy yesterday. And they give you, guy gives you a pamphlet and stuff for uh, the medication they're going to use and all the side effects and all this. And like some people have side effects, some don't, so it just depends. I uh, found out that the medication I'm going to get is only going to be one medication. Um, normally, they uh, sometimes they have to have four or five, but that's because, that's because people have the uh, T-cell lymphoma. I have B-cell lymphoma. Uh, so it's only going to take one of those, but the way they administer this is in an IV and it will be that one IV will take eight hours to uh, get into my system. So I got to wait for eight hours. There's a pump of this stuff in me and the next day I'll be there for about an hour to finish up and then the day after that I will get a infusion of uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, to help pretty much help everything else it's gonna be destroyed because basically what's gonna happen is they're gonna destroy destroy all my cells uh, basically uh, white and red cells so um, basically that's going to happen and it's gonna happen and it's not gonna be every Every week or anything like that, it's going to be every, once every 28 days I have to go through that. And then after they take a look and see what it's doing, if it's doing what it's supposed to, um, then they'll continue and they'll do some more tests and see how my system's reacting to this stuff. So I could be on this well, every 28 days for maybe anywhere from four to six months. And uh, I won't be on it all the time. This will be one of those deals where it's just going to kill off a whole bunch of uh, cancer cells. So, so that's going to happen. So here we are. Well, as usual, I was on eBay the other day. And these ARC-5 receivers and the transmitters, uh, they use a, uh, a dynamotor for power. Uh, normally a 28 volt. Uh, dynamo motor, you feed 28 volts in and you get about 225 to 250 volts DC out. So it eliminates the use of uh, making a power supply and that's how they originally came up. Well, I was just happened to be on eBay the other day and some guy was selling these 28 volt dynamo motors and it's totally complete. You never even find the plate and everything else hooked to them. Uh, so, really, and he was selling them for $29.99. Free shipping on top of that. So, yeah, most of these I've been buying, um, the ones I've bought, they're anywhere from $50 to $70. And they were complete. I mean, just the wires are hanging out. Well, this thing here, I'll show you how it works. There's the, uh, bottom of the receiver that's where it would plug into and how this would work is I'm gonna line it up right but so that it plugs in there we go You plug it in, and there it is. That's how it goes. So, kind of something else. This is the first time I've seen one this complete. 
will actually plug in the back of the uh, the uh, receiver, and then this is completely untouched. The wiring was completely untouched. There was nothing there that was messed up at all. No extra wires or anything like that. Um, so basically these are not electrolytic caps on the sides here. They are just regular capacitors. So uh, they would probably have to be, uh, they're not leaking, but more than likely they would probably have to be replaced. So, but anyway, yeah, it looks like uh, this is something else. I've never had one that was complete like that. It's a dyno motor. And it's just this, it has these little tabs that just locks it in place. So, yeah. So it's not bad at all. But of course I never stopped there. I was on eBay and I found another receiver. Uh, the guy had built a power supply for it. In fact, he'd done some mod modifications to it. Oh, come on, Chuck. Uh, ah. And uh, he did modifications to it, and the difference between that one and this one, uh, that one goes, I think, from 6 megahertz to 9 megahertz. megahertz. This, I think, was 3 to 6. So this was going to be good for like 80 meters in the amateur band. And the other one would be good for 40 meters. And I didn't stop there. I got into another auction <laughs> online and I bought an ARC-5 transmitter. So that is also 6 to 9. So that will be companion transmitter and receiver for those. I do have a couple others on the shelf up above me, uh, more ARC 5s, there's an ARC 5 transmitter up here, another one, another ARC 5 was modified and made uh, just a VFO out of it, so uh, I've got quite a few here, so this is going to add to my collection, basically it's what I have, I've got all kinds of collections in this house, uh, but yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm playing around here and uh, just trying to keep from sliding on the ice outside. Luckily, we had two days where it was like uh, got from 42 to 45 degrees, so that was enough to start melting the ice. And then those days we actually had rain, so it basically it started washing away the snow that was there. But got up today, it's snowing, it's been snowing all night apparently, snow everywhere again, so, of course, Chubby doesn't mind that, he loves, loves the snow, so, so anyhow, that's what I'm doing, and we'll see, and Chubby's outside again, I said the magic word.